All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So yeah, we are getting back on the water after a brief hiatus. It may not have felt like that to you, but it's definitely been to me. Uh, I haven't gone fishing for about two weeks because my car has been in the shop and we've had heat waves and this, that, and the other thing. So uh, yeah, we're getting back in after quite a, a break, probably the longest break I've taken all year. We're going to this spot, I lost my train of thought, and we're going to try something a little different perhaps. Uh, we're gonna fish the single jig, at least that's the plan like last time, and we're gonna downsize our profile. But I've also brought some different types of gulp with me this time, and if the bike is at all tricky or if it's really on fire and I'm just getting shorts, I might try switching up different gulp uh, varieties just to see how they, they you know hold up to fluke, uh, if the fluke are interested, if they're durable. Um, because it'd be interesting to see if we can use something other than just the typical, you know, four inch swimming mullet or five inch swimming mullet. So, uh, I'll let you know what it is I'm using. I'll show you and all that stuff, uh, and we'll get on the water. So I hope you enjoy So stay tuned because as always, we're about to get some fishing accomplished. So, so long as the conditions permit, here's what we're going to be working with. We're going to start with just the tried and true classic four inch white gulp swimming mullets. Uh, we're gonna start with that just to see if there are in fact fish around. We're not gonna get experimental until we know uh, we can get on some fish. And along with that, what we're gonna try today is these. These are new, I've never fished these. I saw these on another YouTube channel uh, and I had to try them because I could see these being both useful for this as well as for perhaps lake trout, uh, vertical jigging. These are paddle shads. Uh, this is four inch, which I think is good for this, but I'd probably upsize, um, assuming these work, if I do decide to vertical jig these for lake trout. Uh, these will probably be my second choice. We also have these sand eels, but I've had these for a while. I usually use these when I'm just messing around on shore. I might give these a go if I'm really trying to get some serious variety action going. These are five inch, I believe. I've gotten fish in them before, but Usually I use these when I'm pulling a lot of things I don't want out of the water, when my gulp keeps getting mangled. Uh, but finally, we have the five inch or four inch jerk shad, five inch, five inch. Uh, and these I think could do some, some real damage uh, with the white jig head. Everything I'm fishing today will be on a one half ounce jig head, so long as I can hold bottom with that, which I should be able to. Um, we're fishing anywhere from 25 to 30 feet of water. So we're, let's get out to where we can find some fish and get on some action. All right, here we are, folks. First spot we're gonna just try at. Uh, as promised, fishing a very light setup. Half ounce jig head, four inch piece of gulp, white swimming mullet. We got a slight wind versus tide thing going, so we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, winds are supposed to be light today, so I'm hoping this doesn't make our drifts too wonky, but we might have to turn the kayak around and pedal. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into today. Weird drift, I can already tell. Light east winds going against moderately strong incoming tide. Might have to pedal into it. There we go. Something. Probably a sea robin, but maybe not. But almost certainly, yes. And that's how we're starting today. Not chill out, chill out. Sim it down now. Let's not also get spined. You need to chill out. Oh, uh, you would. You would. All right, first fish in the boat, first drift is a sea robin. Uh, we got a wonky drift, so we're gonna try and figure out how we can make this work best, because this is what the whole mooring is gonna look like, wind against tide. Um, we'll make it work. All right, one drift down, one sea robin in the boat. Starting to figure this drift out. Uh, let's try again, slightly different boat position, see if this makes uh, a difference at all. Water looks good though, good clarity. Um, yeah, this is moving weird. Let's turn the boat around. There we 
go. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't feel like a sea robin, but it doesn't feel like a fluke either. Porgy? Look at that, folks. Calling them already. Species number two of the day. We get some larger ones. We might consider keeping some of these guys. Do some pan fried whole porgy action. All right, it's that time of the day where we have to dodge a bunch of boats. So I've been doing that whole thing and changing the camera and all that stuff, the battery. Well, we're back in now. We got a little opening. So let's see if we can get on some action. First things first, you always gotta be aware of your surroundings, safety first, so this is probably peak traffic of the day. So I'm doing my best to stay out of people's way. There we go, oh, that's a fluke. First fluke of the day. Ah, uh, yeah, you're close. Probably shouldn't pull you in, but we're going to. You're not that big, but you might measure up. We're not letting go keepers until we get at least three fish. Or if we get a monster, I don't think you're big enough. And you're not, you're 18 inches. Not bad though. All right, working a slightly different set of contours right now. A little shallower, but we'll drop off into some deeper water. Let's see what this does. Oh, that could be a fluke. Could be a big fluke. Feels like a sack of bricks. Might be laying on it. Dead weight. Not huge, but he could be a nice fish. Yeah, I knew it. Hooked in the side every time. Might might make 19 though. I would have netted him if uh, he was bigger or hooked in the mouth, but he wasn't getting off. Pretty close. Uh, not even. Not really. Just a hair over 18. 2022 class of fish. All right, now that we know there's definitely fish around, we're going to go over that drift again, but we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna throw this four inch gulp paddle shad. It's also white. Uh, this thing's definitely got some potential. Uh, looks like it moves pretty well through the water. Not unlike a Kai Tech, uh, but it's got the scent. So I'm really curious if uh, the fish will jump on this. It looks great. Uh, we'll find out so shortly. All right, gulp paddle shad. Let's see what the, th the fish think of this. Got some wandering marks down there too. All right, there's a fish on the Berkeley paddle shad and it feels like it's gonna be a sea robin. So that didn't take long. So we're answering the age old question, not really, whether a sea robin will hit a Berkeley gulp paddle shad and we have a resounding yes. Unless that was a, a fluke, but not the fish variety fluke, but a mistake fluke. Let's get it back down there and do a little more scientific survey, rigorous research. Ooh, that, that's a fluke. That's definitely a fluke. That's a good fluke too. Good head shakes, heavy weight. All right. so. Assuming we get this guy up, we are going to see just what the, the Berkeley Gulp Paddle Shack can do. I feel like this is a keeper. This feels good. How good is the question, though? Big head shakes. Big head shakes. Wow. I don't think this one's foul hooked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Easy does it, buddy. Easy does it. Easy does it. Easy does it. In you go. We're taking home some dinner fillets. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Berkeley Gulp Paddle Shad does it. He inhaled it. He wanted that paddle shad. Hey, the paddle shad pays off. Let's see how big this fish is. Geez, I'm rusty. He's just about, just about 20 inches, almost. Not bad. 
First keeper of the month of June. Not a bad one, about just shy of 20 inches. Thick bell. All right, so we got that first fluke bleeding out. It's a little under 20 inches, uh, like 19 and three quarters. Got on the paddle shad, first drift with it. Uh, we also picked up a sea robin, so one and one. Uh, we did what we did with uh, the mullet. Let's do that again and see how it does a, a second round through. Let's make sure that this fluke was not in fact a scientific fluke. Uh, let's get back on them. Keep going with the gulp gauntlet, if you will. That's a, that's a fluke, all right. Little guy. All right, so it's not a fluke that that last one jumped on. And quick release, even better. Sure, well, that could be a good fluke. Oh, not sure, sea robin or fluke. It's gonna be. That's a fluke. That's a fluke. Could be a good one. Could be hooked weird too. Ah, uh, you're close. I shouldn't lift you, but I think I am going to. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a bad idea, but we, we got him. He's close. Probably a little short. Yeah, you're 18 and a half. All right, so we just got our second decent fluke on the paddle shad, so they're definitely pulling their weight. Um, let's get it down there. We'll give this a few more goes. Uh, if it's on fire will not obviously change, but the next thing we're going to try is probably the jerk shad. So we'll see how that holds up uh, with these flu. Oh, yes. Snuck up on me. Not bad, but not. Woo. Another 17 or 18 incher. Cool colors. Must be kind of a gravelly bottom. Whoa! That works. Bite has been slowing down a little bit. Uh, tide is slowing down too, so that could be a correlation between the two, but we'll give this uh, paddle shad another drift or two and then we'll switch to uh, the jerk shad. Definite fluke. Could be a good one. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, sir. This could be number two. I'm getting some color. Oh, yeah, we're going to use the net on this guy. That'll be number two. That'll be number two. Another solid fish. Let's get another subpar net job. All right. <laughs> Boom. Another 20 inch or thereabouts. Who knows? Dinner size. And he spit it. That's why we net him. For number two. Yeah, he's not a big keeper, but he's a keeper. Just. A smidge, just a hair over 19, like almost 19 and a half. But yeah, he's clearly over. There's 19, there's 19 and a half. He's almost there. All right, we got that second fluke bleeding out and it's time for gulp product number three. We're gonna go with the, the jerk shad, which is a, a favorite of many. Um, I've had luck with it in the past, but I usually have always leaned more heavily on the mullet, but since we're trying some, some variety, let's go for a five inch gulp um, jerk shad, half ounce jig head, and that looks just about right. 
let's go reset our drift and see how this does. All right, gulp jerk shad time. Uh, we got two fish in the boat. I will say, uh, as a disclaimer for this lure's uh, performance, the bite has definitely slowed down a little bit. Uh, so I don't expect it to be as rapid fire as the last two pieces of gulp. Uh, we'll take that in consideration, uh, but that's just part of the research. So gulp jerk shad. I'll also say I think I could probably downsize this. There's basically no drag on this thing going down. There's no uh, paddle tail or swirly tail. I could probably even get away with like a 3 8 ounce uh, if the tide with the tide kind of downplaying, but we'll try it the half ounce just for uh, uniformity's sake. All right, we just did about 10 minutes drifting with uh, the jerk shad and had one or two grabs, but nothing committed. Uh, we'll try this again. If I get the same th results in this drift, we're gonna go back to the paddle shad because that was doing the trick. And I know there's fish around. It's just, uh, maybe they're not digging this right now. The bite was a little more furious. And maybe if I downsized weight uh, down to 3 8 ounce, I might have some real issues holding the bottom with that. Maybe not when we go to completely dead slack tide or if the wind just stopped. But uh, as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'd be very curious if I go another drift without getting anything. If I throw the paddle shot on and start getting action, that tells you which one uh, is speaking to these fish a bit more. All right, it's really died out the last hour or so. So we're fishing the gulp swimming wallet again and seeing if this uh, gets us back on the action. It's the tried and true, the old reliable. Let's see if it can turn things around. Well, it didn't take long. Literally, as soon as it dropped down, it got a fluke. Right as soon as our first drop hit the, the ground, Hit the bottom, I should say. It's been a while since we hooked a fluke. It finally broke a stretch of not catching any fluke. Let's see if we can continue with it. Despite the, the obstacles, uh, gulp swimming mullet pulling through when the other two gulp were really struggling. Uh, not to say they're out for the count either. I've uh, still got some time to fish, as long as the conditions don't get much worse than this or improve, uh, we will see. Alright, so this wind is definitely more than uh, was forecasted today, but always expect the unexpected. This is still doable, it's just not very fun, uh, or as fun as it could be, but I'm going to start making my way towards the launch, uh, hitting a few spots in the way, and if anything good happens, you'll see it. We've made a move. Uh, this might be our last drift or series of drifts. It's just getting to be too difficult to fish effectively. We're spending more time resetting drifts than actually fishing. And it's tiring. I'm soaking wet. Not that that would stop me, but it doesn't really show any signs of getting any better. So we got what we came for. Uh, if you see nothing else, that's probably going to do it for this session, but we'll see what happens. Sneak a third keeper. It's a good fish, too. Wow. We're pulling him against the tide, but it's a nice fish. Very nice fish. I don't believe this. For all intents and purposes, we're just about to give up. Unless this thing's bell hooked. And it's not. That's probably the best fish of the day right there. Let's go, buddy. The GoPro just gave out, but we just managed probably the nicest fish of the day. Ugh. Easy 20. I've been completely off most of the day. But at least 22 inch or 21. 
about your crummy time. It's probably about the worst time for the GoPro battery to give out. Just got our best fluke of the day. I'm guessing four pounder at least. He inhaled the swimming mullet. So that's another point for the swimming mullet. The old classic tried and true faithful, which brings us up to three keepers, which we're one shy of a limit again. So we're gonna have to go over that trip because it'll be cool to get a limit our first of the year. Uh, but we'll measure this guy. We'll just get him unhooked if we can. Solid fluke right there. Best of the day. Let's get him stringed up and ready to go home. All right, let's get the stringer going. Quick measure just to keep me honest. Of course, we're all tangled up. What else would you expect? He is about 21 inches bump to tail not bad at all well no one can say we didn't work for it today uh, we're gonna go over that drift at least once or twice more most I'm gonna fish is another 30 minutes but let, it'll be cool to get our first limit of fluke of the season so if there's one 21 incher there there should be another keeper heck maybe even a bigger one let's get it down there and see what we can do that outgoing tide, we're getting a lot of junk in the water, which is unfortunate. And I will say I am soaked right now. I'm getting just super splashed down from all these waves. Uh, if I didn't just get that fish, we would have called it right then and there, but let's see if we can end with a limit. We'll get a truly large See if we can get a truly large fluke. Oh, well, it's not a big one, but it's a fluke. And it's off. Fluke off. This is the spot right here. That's a fluke. Not a big fluke, but they're stacked here. I feel like the last fish could eat you. Oh man, this might be it. Uh, you lighten up quick. Uh, no way. And a quick release, and of course, wow, you got a crap at me. All right, could have called it at that last drift, but I got that fluke and the hook flew out and got tangled around by the rod, so that drift kind of got botched. So we're giving it one more drift. Uh, this will likely be it. And depending on how it goes, we're going out swinging. There we go. Yeah, baby. That's a fluke. You had a lot of bark at first, but no bite. But thank you for biting. Back down we go. We are on them. That, that's a much better fish right there. Oh yeah, this is it. This is number four. I'm telling you now, number four right here. Number four. Let's go. First limit of the year. Good head shakes. close. We're netting them just in case. I don't think so. It's like an 18 inch fish right there. Close. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Not holding my breath. Got a thick belly though. 
Yeah, he's a little under 18. Goodbye. All right, so that's gonna do for this session. Uh, overall, not too bad. I mean, originally I sold this thing as like a gulp gauntlet. We definitely did mix up the gulp in the first half of this session, but once we got that third keeper, the mission really became just trying to get that fourth one. It never happened, but I guess my takeaways uh, from what happened today was, Originally, I was gonna try and go for four different types of gulp, uh, but what we ultimately ended up doing was really just two and a half. We fished the, the gulp mullet and the paddle shad, both I think four inch size. Uh, gave them both their fair shake. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the gulp swimming mullet. That's like the gold standard for artificial baits to fish with fluke for. Uh, and obviously it did exactly what you expect it to do. It got a lot of action. Uh, fish were going after it. Sea robins, fluke, corgis, sundials, uh, and other sessions we've got striped bass on them, bluefish, weak fish, etc. Uh, but I will say, uh, fishing with the paddle shad, I was impressed. It definitely went head to head with uh, the, the mullet. Um, we got the first two keepers on that, and that was after not getting any real substantial fish with the swimming mullet. So I'm definitely gonna add that to my arsenal. Uh, I think I'm gonna buy some larger ones too. I think I was fishing four inch today. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll let you know uh, in the text on the screen. But I'd be curious how the five inch, the next size up would do. Um, I only say that because as the, the profile gets larger, and especially if I fish deeper water, I'm gonna have to fish a bigger, either bucktail or jig head. And I don't think that would pair too well with the four inch size. So in the future, uh, especially when I'm out in Montauk and actually when I go upstate as well, I'm gonna bring some of those paddle shads in the five inch size and see how those things vertically jig if you're pairing them with like a full ounce or three quarter ounce jig head. Uh, and I also am kind of curious how, you know, striped bass and bluefish would react to those because I think that bobble tail profile is a bit more enticing to them than just the regular, you know, mullet tail. Not that it can't be done with those. I've gotten stripers and bluefish on them, but I think the paddle tail is a bit more of a ideal presentation. So. Uh, to be continued, but I guess my takeaways are both are totally adequate uh, for the kind of fishing I'm doing today. I did fish the jerk shad as well, but I didn't really give it, I didn't give it a, a fair shot compared to those other gulps, uh, especially since I didn't really unleash it until the bite pretty much plummeted. Uh, so I will give those another go in the future as well. But that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want me to do more stuff like this, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I will see y'all when I see you next. Have a great day and of course, goodbye from fishing.